we are now on Saturday the 28th of September 2024 it's now five minutes past ten I've had a wonderful day I hope you have I saw the sunshine this morning and I thought yes what a beautiful day I must walk so I did what I usually do and uh, I prepared the readings for today, which I've already prepared all the readings for the last month from the um, 10th of August. And uh, I'll have my new denture on the Thursday coming. I've got two eye appointments, one for a normal check-in every year. I've got glaucoma in the family and I've got cataracts. But I can still read when it's a big font, it's easier. And uh, then I have this specific diabetes 2 eye test, the second. So I wasn't planning to record, but I'm feeling that I should be recording already. But a lot of things have happened. So I'm, I've got my folder ready. I'm going to say one or two prayers, not lots, because there's lots of readings. I've got them all in a folder from Monday to today. They're all short, but when you put them all together, it's going to be quite long. So I'm not going to be... It's the only way I can cope with the arrears of reading. <laughs> Sorry about that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let's pray against nuclear war and all wars, but they'll all be ceased. Put peace into each other's hands, and like a treasure hold it. And we pray for all the people of Ukraine who've died and who are still suffering, and for their poor leadership. And we pray for the people of Gaza, Palestine who are suffering and dying and ill and sick. And they've died, women and children, so many, and they're suffering so much, and the world is standing by. So this is the year of prayer. I'm sorry, Deborah, that you can't hear me on your mobile. I'll get as near to the microphone as possible. And I apologise to all others who... Uh, don't hear me very well. I hope that will change this week. God of blessings, in this year, give us a spirit of listening, of openness to your word and longing for your kingdom as we journey towards the Jubilee, a time of new beginnings. We pray for help and strength to heal our relationships with each other and all creation. Sing your song of love over us, renewing our strength and courage, so we may join our voices together, discovering new harmonies of hope, new melodies of reconciliation, attentive to the spirit, and awake to the needs of the world. May we seek your life-giving presence as we join as one global family in a great symphony of prayer and praise. Amen. And the Pope's prayer this September is The Holy Father's Intentions for September let us pray that each of our, us listens with our hearts to the cry of the earth and of the victims of environmental disasters and the climate crisis, making a personal commitment to care for the world we inhabit. Amen. And prayers before reading sacred scripture. Open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand 
what you want to teach me, and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. And prayers from Scripture for all of us. Come Holy Spirit, guide us. Work in us with your gifts, so that your presence may be shown, and we may serve in different ways for the good of all. Amen. Spirit of the living God, you alone search out everything, even the depths of God's intentions. Remain with us always that we may know all that God has freely bestowed on us, that we may rightly judge and value all things. Amen. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may put to death all sinful thoughts and actions. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may live as God's child. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may be free from slavery to sin. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may pray and cry out, Abba, Father. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may possess the inheritance of grace that awaits me. Amen. Come, Spirit of Truth, and lead us to the whole truth. Speak to us of Jesus, so that we may speak of him to others. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and help us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. Intercede for us so that the one who sees into our hearts and knows our thoughts may hear our prayers. Amen. Glorious Father, give us the Holy Spirit to make us wise so that we may come to know you. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know the hope to which you have called us, the rich blessings you have promised, and how great is your power at work in those who believe. Amen. Lord God, fill us with knowledge of your will through the wisdom and spiritual understanding your Spirit bestows on your faithful ones, so that we may conduct ourselves in a worthy manner. Be fruitful in every type of work, and do always what is pleasing to you. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. I humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Eternal, Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the get devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. And angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love entrusts me here, ever this night be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And we pray for the faithful departed, our loved ones, friends and neighbours, and even those we don't know. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and be and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. So I had a long walk today. I walked from where I live here all the way to Hunstanton and took pictures. It was beautiful. The sun and people and dogs and families. It was beautiful. And I was tired when I reached home. And I had a very long rest. But I have this prepared. So... It, it's got the contents of all the readings for this week. So we'll begin with 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The liturgical readings for Monday the 23rd of September 2024, week 25, in Ordinary Time, Year 2, and the memorial was to my favourite saint, who's on my screensaver, St. Pius of Pietrelcina, Padre Pio, a priest and monk, a very holy man. I'm not as near the um, microphone as I would like to be, so I'll try to get nearer because I'm aware that some of you do listen on mobile phones. And I'm sorry if you can't hear very well. I hope it will improve next week. The first reading is a reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 27 to 34. And my son, when he was a teenager, he loved, he loved um, these readings. And those from Ecclesiasticus, he loved a lot. I'm sure he still loves them. The willful wrongdoer is abhorrent to the Lord. My son, do not refuse a kindness to anyone who begs it, if it is in your power to perform it. Do not say to your neighbour, go away, come another time, I will give it to you tomorrow. If you can do it now, do not plot harm against your neighbour as he lives unsuspecting next door. Do not pick a groundless quarrel with a man who has done you no harm. Do not emulate the man of violence. Never model your conduct on his. For the willful wrongdoer is abhorrent to the Lord, who confides only in honest men. The Lord's curse lies on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the virtuous. He mocks those who mock, but accords his favour to the humble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading from Psalm 14 and the response is The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without fault. He who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. He who does not slander with his tongue. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbour, who holds the godless in disdain, but honours those who fear the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm for ever. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The gospel acclamation, I will not be singing Alleluia, not this week. Alleluia, Alleluia. By his own choice, the Father made us his children by the message of the truth so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he created. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your light must shine in the sight 
of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. Alleluia. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, 16 to 18. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke 8. Glory to you, O Lord. A lamp is put on a lampstand so that people may see the light when they come in. Jesus said to his disciples, No one lights a lamp to cover it with a bowl or to put it under a bed. No, he puts it on a lampstand so that people may see the light when they come in. For nothing is hidden, but it will be made clear, nothing secret, but it will be known and brought to the light. So take care how you hear, for anyone who has will be given more. From anyone who has not, even what he thinks he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we do a brief reflection on each of the readings, on each one I'm going to do. I'll do a small one, uh, except on Sundays. So the reflection on Luke 8. Well, the sayings of Jesus in today's Gospel reading begin... No one lights a lamp to cover it with a bowl or to put it under a bed. What did it mean to light a lamp? Well, in the time of Jesus, the reference is to a small lamp, usually made of clay, filled with oil and with a wick. It could be set on a stand or hung from it. It's obvious that no one would hide a burning lamp by putting a bowl over it or putting it under a bed. It's lit to give light to those who are in the house or to guests who may come into the house. And Jesus is referring to the light of the gospel, which is not to be hidden, but should be allowed to stream forth into the darkness in the world. We've been given the light of the gospel and our calling, yours and mine, if we're baptised and confirmed Christians, is to allow that light to shine through our lives, how we live, how we deal with people. And on one occasion, Jesus addressed his disciples as the light of the world and called on them to let their light shine by their good and the gospel. The gospel's not a secret message. It's not intended to be kept hidden or only revealed to a select few. It's for everybody, no matter where they are in society, top, bottom, middle, or I think some people think they're nobodies. God wants even the nobodies to hear his word and find the truth. It is the Lord's light which is to shine for all to see. We each have a role to play in allowing the light of the Lord's gospel to shine in our world. Firstly, however, we need to allow ourselves to be illumined by the light of the Lord's word by listening carefully to it, only then can we be channels of that light to others, thereby sharing in the Lord's mission of being a light to the world. And that's in all our dealings with everybody. I mean, even when we make mistakes, we don't need to get angry with people or if you think they've made a mistake. 
like because I'm old I check what I spend. I check my receipts from all the shops. I don't always look at what I've paid and if they don't tell me I don't know till I get home. So on I, oh, Sundays when the weather's nice or even when it's not nice I go to Mikey's Cafe. It's a very nice cafe near North Beach, in North Beach, Heacham. Lovely cafe, lovely family people. And they're so busy sometimes, especially if the g girls, the grandchildren who work in there as teenagers, are on their own. And what happened on Sunday? I didn't look at my receipt. I had two. One was for a uh, cappuccino and... Uh, Four buckets were reduced. There was a reduced thing at the counter. They were a pound each. So I bought them and she was so busy. I said, I'll have an ice cream after. <laughs> and uh, what happened was I didn't, uh, I've just paid that with a card because it's easier for me. I keep the card for when they don't accept a card. I use the card, but if I, if I have a little cash, I ignore it until I get somewhere where I use it where it's needed or you know so the second one I put two of the balls that were reduced to a pound on, on the where I was having my coffee and then I when I went she called me about the ice cream I said when you're free so I've got two more and um, I'd also bought in the first t case the um, four buckets so there I had these balls and then these two two guns have been well not guns but the water pistols but there was a mistake on the bill and I thought oh 20 pounds 10 is a lot for that and I went back today the lady was so kind and so nice and then when she pointed out that the that the pistols would cost 250 each that made it up that made it or whatever else and I said, oh, no, no, I'll pay. It's all right. I, it's okay. But do you know, because they were in the pound thing, she she was so generous. She said, no, no, if they were in that, there are some good people. So when you are a Christian, you mustn't argue with people over things. You must listen and you must put things gently and quietly because... Sometimes the cost of living is outrageous and you just, you must never get angry with salespeople or people who are selling to you or what have you and some people do but you don't, you just go through it calmly and care. And she was extremely kind and generous, she didn't need to do that but she did, she did, she refunded me the extra money because I'd only had two scoops of ice cream and these balls and two sweat and I thought that's rather a lot but no she she refunded me but that was very kind and I thank her for that but we must deal with people like that in polite ways we mustn't lose our temper or get angry or not we must be as gentle as Jesus is with people we deal with because it's better it's much better to be like that. You don't go shouting at people or on the phone when you're dealing with people. So that is how you show the light of Christ when you live with people and you deal with people. Because, yeah, people make mistakes. Sometimes we make the mistakes. So you give them the opportunity to examine everything and make their decisions. So we'll now get on with the next reading. I don't want to take up all your time chatting, sorry. So we're now going to look at um, the liturgical readings for Tuesday the 24th of September, Tuesday week 25 in Ordinary Time, Year 2. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs. I love Proverbs. Proverbs 21, 1-6. And 10 to 13. And the heading is Various Proverbs of Solomon, son of David. Like flowing water is the heart of the king in the hand of the Lord, who turns it where he pleases. A man's conduct may strike him as upright. The Lord, however, weighs the heart 
to act virtuously and with justice is more pleasing to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eye, proud heart, lamp of the wicked, nothing but sin. The hard-working man is thoughtful and all is gain. Too much haste and all that comes of it is want. To make a fortune with the help of a lying tongue, such the idle fantasy of those who look for death. The wicked man's soul is intent on evil. He looks on his neighbour with dislike. When a mocker is punished, the ignorant man grows wiser. When a wise man is instructed, he acquires more knowledge. The just one watches the house of the wicked. He hurls the wicked to destruction. He who shuts his ear to the poor man's cry shall himself plead and not be heard. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse me a moment. A reading from Psalm 118 and your response and mine is, guide me, Lord, in the path of your commands. Guide me, Lord, in the path of your commands. They are happy whose life is blameless, who follow God's law. Make me grasp the way of your precepts, and I will muse on your wonders. Guide me, Lord, in the path of your commands. I have chosen the way of truth with your decrees before me. Train me to observe your law, to keep it with my heart. Guide me, Lord, in the path of your commands. Guide me in the path of your commands. For there is my delight. I shall always keep your law for ever and ever. Guide me, Lord, in the path of your commands. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Happy are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 8. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke 19 to 21. Luke 8. My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. His mother and his brothers came looking for him, but they could not get to him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and brothers are standing outside and want to see you. But he said in answer, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll do a brief reflection on Luke 8. 
It's often the way in the Gospels that people cannot reach Jesus because of the crowds around him. Zacchaeus had to climb a tree to see Jesus, notwithstanding he was alleged to be short. So he had to climb up because of the crowd and the blind man tried to make contact with Jesus by shouting towards him but the crowd around Jesus told him to be quiet. Parents wanted to bring children to Jesus for him to bless them but the crowd and of the disciples around Jesus tried to prevent them from doing so. In all of those cases, Jesus reached over the crowd to the person or group who wanted to make contact with him. He called Zacchaeus down from his tree and told him that he wanted to go to his home. He told the crowd to bring the blind man to him he rebuked his disciples for trying to block parents from bringing their children to him and then proceeded to take the children in his arms and bless them. In today's Gospel reading, it is the mother and brothers of Jesus, his own flesh and blood, who cannot get to Jesus because of the crowd. The crowd around him was massive. However, on this occasion, Jesus does not reach over the crowd to his family to make contact with them. Rather, he declares that his real family are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Jesus withdraws from his blood family in a way that he did not withdraw from others who tried to make contact with him. He wanted to show clearly that he was in the process of forming a new family. Membership of this family would be determined not by blood, but by the willingness to hear the word of God as Jesus proclaims it and then to put that word into practice. We all belong in this new family by virtue of our baptism and we look to Jesus as our brother and to God as our father and to Jesus' mother as our mother. We show that we are faithful members of this family by listening carefully to the word of Jesus and seeking to live it every day of our lives. So we're now going on to the liturgical readings for Wednesday the 25th of September 2024, week 25 in Ordinary Time, year 2. And it is the memorial of St. Finbar, Bishop. The first reading is a reading from the book of Proverbs 30, verses 5 to 9. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the heading and theme, Give me neither poverty nor riches. To his words make no addition, lest he reprove you and know you for a fraud. Every word of God is unalloyed. He is the shield 
of those who take refuge in him. Two things I beg of you. Do not grudge me them before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Grant me only my share of bread to eat. For fear that surrounded by plenty, I should fall away and say, The Lord, who is the Lord? Or else, in destitution, take to stealing and profane the name of my God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse me. A reading from Psalm 118. And your response and mine. Your word is a lamp for my steps, O Lord. Your word is a lamp for my steps, O Lord. Keep me, Lord, from the way of error and teach me your law. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Your word is a lamp on my steps, O Lord. Your word, O Lord, forever stands firm in the heavens. I turn my feet from evil paths to obey your word. Your word is a lamp for my steps, O Lord. I gain understanding from your precepts, and so I hate false ways, lies I hate and detest, but your law is my love. Your word is a lamp for my steps, O Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Through him, give thanks to God the Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Alleluia. Gospel of Luke 9, 1 to 6. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to Luke 9. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, this is the theme, sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for the journey, take nothing for the journey, neither staff nor haversack nor bread nor money and let none of you take a spare tunic. Whatever house you enter, Stay there, and when you leave, let it be from there. As for those who do not welcome you, when you leave their town, shake the dust from your feet as a sign to them. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The reflection on Gospel Luke 9. There is a striking contrast in today's Gospel reading. Jesus gave the twelve, excuse me, sorry, a share in his own power to 
to heal and to cure as he sent them out on a mission. Yet, he also sent them out in weakness, telling them to take very little for the journey. No staff or haversack or bread or money or spare tunic. It is if Jesus wanted his power to be revealed in human weakness and vulnerability. It's often the case that the Lord works most powerfully through our experiences of weakness and frailty. Many of us feel weak, I do all the time, <laughs> and frail from time to time, but that's also me too. Just as Jesus asks his disciples in the gospel reading to forego much of what most people rely on, we all find ourselves having to forego something or someone. Yet in such times of loss and weakness, the Lord continues to work powerfully within us and among us. Such times can throw us back more fully on the Lord, who is present to us in difficult times as well as in good times. Like now, recently, I've been having a terrible time. Terrible. I'm not going to waste any time telling you, but I have. And, and wealth, you know, health, wealth, and, you know, dentistry is costing a fortune, um, which I didn't know because I hadn't had toothache for years, you know. So you feel weak, you feel it's all there and it happens to all of us. But when you rely on the Lord, somehow he lifts you up. It's wonderful. And the first reading declares here that God is the shield of those who take refuge in him. So that's what we have to do when we're having a bad time. And when Jesus sent out the twelve in such a vulnerable state, it was because he wanted them to rely on God as their shield rather than over relying on themselves, which is the modern world. Everyone relies on themselves. They never believe in that wonderful gift that God is there for us. And he does all sorts of wonderful things to help you get through every day, not just every now and then but every day so when we experience our weakness and frailty in a more pronounced way which i have for the last few weeks it is an opportunity to rely more fully on the lord as our shield as saint paul reminds us in one of his letters the lord's power can be made perfect in weakness is something we have to learn we really do have to learn to depend on God and stop depending on our own ability when it's obvious it's gone for a time so the apostles are united to one another the fact that the bishops, this is here and throughout the world, are a college can be seen from ancient times. For bishops all over the known world were united with the Bishop of Rome and with each other in bonds of love and peace. When there was need for discussion, the bishops assembled in councils to settle questions of major importance. The fact that bishops are a college is also shown by the ancient practice of summoning several bishops to take part in a bishop's consecration and from this is the church so we need the bishops and priests and we must continue to pray for them that is part of our function as laity So now we're on liturgical readings for Thursday, 26th of September, 2024, week 25, 
of Ordinary Time, Year 2, and a memorial of the saints Cosmas and Damian, Martyrs. Hope to get back to reading saints soon. First reading is a reading from the book, and my son loves these, I do actually too, Ecclesiasticus 1, and the heading, There is nothing new under the sun. Vanity of vanities, the preacher says, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. For all his toil, his toil, under the sun, what does man gain by it? A generation goes, a generation comes, yet the earth stands firm forever. The sun rises, the sun sets, then its place to its place. It speeds, and there it rises. Southward goes the wind, then turns to the north. It turns and turns again. Back then to its circling goes the wind. Into the sea all the rivers go. And yet the sea is never filled. And still to their goal the rivers go. All things are wearisome. No man can say that eyes have not had enough of seeing, ears their fill of hearing. What was will be again. What has been done will be done again. And there is nothing new under the sun. Take anything of which it may be said. Look now, this is new. Already long before our time, it existed. Only no memory remains of earlier times, just as in times to come. Next year itself will not be remembered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So... The psalm, I've not actually put which psalm it is, I've made a huge mistake there. I could get my um, missile out and put it in, but I'll have to do it afterwards. So I can't tell you even what psalm it is, which is really bad of me. I've typed it up, but I haven't put which psalm. But I'll give the response, so this is one mistake, I should have checked. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. I've got a feeling it might be 118, but I don't know. I'll put it um, in the write-up contents. Because um, I think it's over a couple of days that this 118 is written. 119 is the longest in the Bible. It goes on forever. The first part of the psalm, part one. You turn men back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday. Come and gone no more than a watch in the night. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up and flowers by evening. It withers and fades. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Make us know the shortness of our life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent. Is your anger forever? Show pity to your servants. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. In the morning, 
fill us with your love, we shall exult and rejoice all our days. Let the favour of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I consider the wonders of your law. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except me. Alleluia. Gospel of Luke 9, verse 7 to 9. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to to you, O Lord. I beheaded him, so who is this? I hear such reports about. Herod, the Tetrarch, had heard about all that was going on, and he puzzled, because some people were saying that John had risen from the dead, others that Elijah had reappeared still others that one of the ancient prophets had come back to life. But Herod said, John, I beheaded him. So who is this I hear such reports about? And he was anxious to see Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll reflect briefly on Luke 9, 7 to 9. It is said that Herod Antipas, the Tetrarch of Galilee at the end of today's Gospel, that he was anxious to see Jesus. Why would a powerful ruler like Herod Antipas want to see a preacher and healer from a small village in Galilee? The Gospel reading says that he was puzzled. Puzzled because of the various reports he was hearing about Jesus. He was asking himself, who is this? This is the same Herod who had John the Baptist beheaded in prison. According to Luke's Gospel from which we're reading this week, Herod did get to see Jesus on the eve of Jesus' death by crucifixion. Pilate sent Jesus to Herod to get his view on this troublesome prophet. According to Luke, Herod questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. So Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt putting an elegant robe on him in mockery and sent him back to Pilate. Herod's curiosity about Jesus did not bring him to faith in Jesus. Yet sometimes people's curiosity about Jesus does bring them to faith and Muslims have started reading the Bible and questioning their faith, especially in troubled areas. It's quite interesting to see, and discussions are going on. So curiosity is a good thing. According to the Gospel of John, though, Nicodemus's curiosity about Jesus brought him to faith, though hidden. Eventually, he fully did come. And even people of faith, can be curious about Jesus and their curiosity can help to deepen their faith and there is much to be curious about when it comes to Jesus. There's such a depth to him that there is no limit to the questions we could ask in his regard.
all of us. To believe is to see dimly, as St. Paul says, and as people of faith, we will always be trying to see more clearly. It's good to notice the questions that our faith gives rise to, questions about God, about Jesus, about the world. Exploring these questions can lead to a deepening of our faith and to our growth in our relationship with the Lord. We should always be questioning and reading the Gospels and reading the Bible, Old and New Testament. Yes, we need to know it. So we're now moving on. We're on today's readings. No, we're not. Sorry. God, we're, on. We're, going, we're not on Saturdays yet. We have one more. So I'm doing my best to catch up and I've got to do that for the whole of August. So I might do it in this form because it hasn't reached an hour yet. So I'm amazed at myself. I'm, uh, it's because I've cut out all the prayers so you can hear the word of God which is more important well everything is important isn't it so liturgical readings for yesterday Friday the 27th of September 2024 week 25 year 2 and it was a very good saint I benefited from the Vincent de Paul Society when I lived in Jamaica my husband and I so it's a memorial to Saint Vincent de Paul we love him he was so good and they still do his work today collecting food and goods and helping the poor in all countries of the world where there's a Catholic formation church so back to Ecclesiasticus James loves these first reading is from Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 11 there is a time for every occupation under heaven. There is a season for everything. A time for every occupation under heaven. A time for giving birth. A time for dying. A time for planting. A time for uprooting. What has been planted a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for knocking down, a time for building, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones away, a time for gathering them up, a time for embracing, a time to refrain from embracing, a time for searching, a time for losing, a time for keeping, a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, a time for sowing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for loving, a time for hating, a time for war, a time for peace. What does a man gain for the efforts that he makes? I contemplate the task that God gives mankind to labour at. All that he does is apt for its time. But though he has permitted man to consider time, in its wholeness man cannot comprehend the work of God from beginning to end. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Psalm 143. And the response is, 
Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. He is my love, my fortress. He is my stronghold, my saviour, my shield, my place of refuge, response. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Lord, what is man that you care for him? Mortal man that you keep him in mind? Man who is merely a breath? whose life fades like a passing shadow. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. The Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia. The Gospel of Luke chapter 9 verses 18 to 22. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The theme. You are the Christ of God. The Son of Man is destined to suffer grievously. One day, Jesus was praying alone in the presence of his disciples. He put this question to them. Who do the crowd say I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, others Elijah, and others say one of the ancient prophets come back to life. But you, he said, who do you say I am? It was Peter who spoke up, the Christ of God, he said. But he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone anything about this. The Son of Man, he said, is destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll briefly reflect on the Gospel of Luke 9. Some questions are easier to answer than others. In the Gospel reading, Jesus asks the disciples two questions. The first question would have been much easier for them to answer. Who do the crowd say I am? They had their answers immediately. John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the ancient prophets, come back to life. However, they would have found Jesus' second question more difficult to answer. But who do you say I am? This question required them to look into their own hearts and be open and honest about who they understood Jesus to be. We sense a hesitation on the part of the disciples. It was Peter who eventually spoke up on behalf of the others. The Christ of God, Peter confesses, Jesus to be the long-awaited Jewish Messiah. He thereby showed great insight into Jesus. And yet, it was only a limited insight. His answer left open the question as to which kind of Messiah Jesus would turn out to be. 
Jesus immediately began to indicate the kind of Messiah he would be by speaking of himself as the Son of Man who was destined to suffer, to be rejected by the religious authorities and to be put to death all in the service of his loving mission to humankind, all of humankind, everyone, those who believe in God and those who don't, and those who don't have any spiritual life or just live their lives according, and even the Satanists, those who actually positively follow the evil one. He came for them too. It was probably not the kind of Messiah Peter had in mind. There was more to Jesus than even Peter understood. There's always more to the Lord than we can grasp or understand. He's more loving, more merciful than we could ever grasp. In one of his letters, St. Paul spoke of in Ephesians 4.19, the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. We spend our lives growing in our appreciation of the Lord's love for us until we reach that eternal moment when we will see him as he really is. The gospel of the Lord is those that we've reflected here. And he's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. And his words live on through you and me. So we're now reached, and it's only an hour, which is not bad for me, is it? <laughs> All those days of readings. So it's worked out better for me and maybe for you. Not as long-winded. <laughs> so... Sorry about the prayers, but I can't, can't include the prayers when I'm doing all these readings, but it might be better in a way. We'll do maybe just a session of prayers, so one time to make up for it, because it's important, our prayers, as well as our listening to God's word. Prayers are important. So the liturgical readings for today, Saturday, so that's got one week out of the way of this month, because I stopped in August. 9th of August was the last and then there was a live one but I don't count that that was I think the 15th and I've done one uh, well two for Deborah's birthday because I can't, she's my spiritual daughter in Australia, I can't leave her out on her birthday I hope Deborah that the second parcel's turned up but it's not Every's fault it's got to Australia, it's their fault they should never put a courier should never put a, a parcel sticking out of a mailbox in the main road, especially when you've got bad neighbours. Anyone could come along and take it out, and the bigger one wouldn't go in it anyway. The Bible did, but the Bible was sticking out. But we know that no one will steal a Bible. <laughs> it says on it, it's a Bible. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll, I'll keep praying that it turns up. It's not every's fault. It's the couriers in Australia. They, they should come to your door and get a signature, a picture or what have you. So here we are on Saturday 28th of September 2024, week 25, ordinary time, year two. And it's the memorials of Saints Wenceslas. Was that King Wenceslas and Lawrence Ruiz and Companions? They were martyrs. So the first reading is a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes 11, 9 to 12 and 8. Excuse me. So, remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the dust returns to the earth, as it once came from it, and the breath to God rejoice in your youth. You who are young, let your heart give you joy in your young days. Follow the promptings of your heart and the desires of your eyes. 
But this you must know, for all these things God will bring you to judgment. Cast worry from your heart, shield your flesh from yet youth, the age of dark hair is vanity. And remember your creator in the days of your youth, before evil days. Come, and in the years approach when you say, These give me no pleasure, before sun and light and moon and stars grow dark, and the clouds return after the rain, the day when those who keep the house tremble and strong men are bowed, when the women grind no longer at the mill, because day is darkening at the windows, And the street doors are shut when the sound of the mill is faint, when the voice of the bird is silenced and song notes are stilled, when to go uphill is an ordeal and a walk is something to dread. Yet the almond tree is in flower, the grasshopper is heavy with food and the caper bush bears its fruit while man goes to his everlasting home and the mourners are already walking to and fro in the street before the silver cord has snapped or the golden lamp been broken or the pitcher shattered at the spring or the pulley cracked at the well or before the dust returns to the earth, as it once came from it, and the breath to God who gave it, vanity of vanities. The preacher says all is vanity, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 89. And a response. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You turn men back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up and flowers by evening. It withers and fades. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Make us know the shortness of our life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent. Is your anger forever? Show pity to your servants. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Let the favour of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our Saviour, Christ Jesus, abolished death and he has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news. Alleluia. Gospel of Luke 9, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, verses 43 to 45. Glory to you, O Lord. The Son of Man is going to be handed over into the power of men. And they were afraid to ask him about what he had just said. At a time when everyone was full of admiration for all he did, Jesus said to his disciples, For your part, you must have these words constantly in your mind. The Son of Man is going to be handed over into the power of men. But they did not understand him. When he said this, thus and this it was hidden from them, so that they should not see the meaning of it, and they were afraid to ask him about what he had just said. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we will briefly reflect on the Gospel of Luke 9, verses 43 to 45. Jesus, it seems, did not allow other people's admiration of him to go to his head. According to today's Gospel reading, just at the time when everyone was full of admiration for all he did, he began to speak of himself in a way that would not have endeared him to many. The Son of Man is going to be handed over into the power of men. Jesus was looking ahead to his passion and death. No one would admire him when he hung from a Roman cross. At that moment, it was mockery and scorn that he mostly received, being spat upon in all sorts. Yet God would have been full of admiration for Jesus in that dark hour, not because he wanted his son to suffer, but because Jesus on the cross was revealing God's love for the world to the full. It was Jesus' message of God's merciful love for all that put him on the cross. He remained faithful to preaching and living that message, even though he knew it would result in his being handed over to death. No one has greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. It was this greater love, this divine love, that shone through Jesus on the cross. It was only in the light of Jesus' resurrection that people of faith would become full of admiration, not only for the way he lived, but for the way he died. Until that Easter moment, all Jesus talk about his coming passion and death made no sense to his disciples. In the words of the gospel reading, it was hidden from them. We who live in the light of Easter can be full of admiration, not only for all Jesus did during his earthly life, but especially for his passion and death and for the tremendous love that it revealed so that's finally one hour 19 minutes for monday 
was it? Yeah, Monday, it was Padre Pio, Monday to Saturday. So that really has taught me something that I didn't know before, that I could, if when I'm not feeling great, <laughs> which is a terrible thing when it happens, or I can't record, I could do something similar again. So you could give me your thoughts. Um, I know who'll give me thoughts. Deborah will, Susan will, Jane will, and Tony will, and um, Liz Lizzie. Um, uh, there's quite a lot of you. You could give me your thoughts of how that went for you, doing all of those daily readings in one video. The reason is sometimes I'm, I haven't got a proper way to speak yet. I'm very concerned about my mouth at the moment and I, I, I want to read the Word of God properly as it should be read and also reflect. So I would like to know how that went for you. Um, was it bad, good or would you just prefer how I've always done it? Prayers, quite a lot of prayers actually. So I never, I never plan how many I'm going to do. But I had to not do them. Only at the beginning. In fact, I have one to do now, don't I? <laughs> I will do it after reading sacred scripture. And I will need my glasses for this because the font is so small I can hardly read it. <laughs> I can't read it, actually, without these. So I'll ask you in a minute. After reading sacred scripture, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me. Through the treasure of the scripture, make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. Yes, I could do the evening readings from the Glenstall Abbey and a few others separately. It would only be brief. So I could, like, for this week, not because uh, I am not really starting until um, Thursday is, was my day and I felt really guilty about not doing what I always do. Um, so I, because I have appointments this week for eye tests and uh, also my dentist, um, he's very good, I like him. And um, actually the lady in my kiss, she, she went to him as well. And uh, we all who've been to him like him, he's a great dentist. Um, the Grange at Snettersham. So yes, I will consider, if I've got a busy week this week, I will prepare all the readings daily, like I do anyway, and uh, do them all like I've done this evening which will give me an easier time because the uploading takes a lot. I have to type up all the content. This is going to be hard to type all this up, but I'll do my best. I won't do any more than I need. And um, see how it goes. So that'll be for two weeks I do it in this way instead of every day. It might be easier on my health and everything. Then I'll still be able to walk. I did enjoy walking today. It was wonderful. But not when there's a storm like yesterday. I don't think I'd like fighting the wind. Oh, it was oh, not quite hurricane level. But you, you could get blown away. <laughs> not, not me with my, my weight, I don't think. Anyway, thank you for listening. May God bless you. I'm sending you God's peace in abundance and may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord and please pray for one another and for the world and against nuclear war and these terrible politicians we've got them everywhere and Great Britain is a tiny country and it wants war uh, our leader wants to join in this Ukraine war we want peace for those people they're being destroyed all their youth all their young men Oh, I don't want any war at all. So thank you so much and God bless you all. Sending you the peace of Christ. I'll be back this week. God bless. Bye bye.